I got to ask you the question about your nickname because we're big on nicknames here on this show, and uh, there are typically some really good ones on high school football teams. How did Booger stack up with some of the other nicknames with guys you played with on your team? Uh, it was uh, up there. You know, there was a guy we called – he had a big head. We called him Head. Um, there was a guy uh, – there was a catfish. Uh, there was Booger. So, yeah, it was kind of – it was right there in the mix depending on – uh, who heard it and what part of the country they were from. I read that when you got to LSU, you were hoping that people would start calling you by your Christian name, but that didn't really work out. Why did you want to shed that after high school? Well, because of how I got it. Like, I, I got that nickname. My sister gave it to me when I was, like, two years old. Like, she was eight and I was two. And, and of course, I didn't realize it at the time. But as I got older, more people started to call me that. Um, you know, cause she heard it from my mom and then she used it. And then as the story goes, anytime that I, I would pick on her, or she got upset. She would, or try to make me upset. She would say booger, booger, booger. And I, I used to hate it. And then finally in high school, man, it was like, that's all people called me. Like nobody ever called me Anthony. And I'm like, great. Going to LSU, um, new start, new chapter, going to be Anthony on campus. And the very first game, man, at LSU, as a freshman, because I started as a freshman, the the guy comes on and says, tackle made by Booger McFarland. And I turn and look to the press box. And I'm like, how in the heck did he find that out? <laughs> and, 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 and at that point, man, I just kind of embraced it. Um, it turned out to be kind of cool because, I mean, there were a lot of, you know, Kevins and Johns and Tims and Rons and all that. But Booger was kind of unique. And so I, I think it kind of helped me. Um, stand out a little bit, you know, especially when I, as a freshman, when I was trying to figure out how to play. And then even beyond that, man, when I first started at the SEC Network in 2014, um, the guy comes in my ear and says, like, how would you like us to font you? I'm like, I don't know what that means. He's like, how would you like your name to appear on the screen? I was like, Booger. And he was like, okay, then here we go. Uh, because most people recognize me and call me Booger. If you call me Anthony, that means you don't know me and you're trying to get my attention, and usually I won't respond. <laughs> that, that might mean you're in trouble. Uh, so tell me about Winsboro, man. What was that like? What was that community like? And growing up, what was your association with uh, the high school football team and your goals to play for them? Well, man, growing up, um, I, I never wanted to play football. I started playing football at 13, and the only reason was is that we lived across the street from the stadium. And, you know, when daylight savings times happen or happened in the fall, and it's 530 and it's dark outside, I used to see them practicing. And I'm like, hmm, okay, my mother wants me to be in the house when the street light comes on, but those kids and those guys over there, they're still out there practicing. OK, so here's a way for me to kind of work around the whole be in the house when the streetlight came on. So I started playing football. Didn't know anything about it. I mean, of course, I've heard of it, but I didn't know the ins and outs of it. And, uh, you know, I played when I was 13. I get to high school and my fr freshman and sophomore year, I was terrible. I, I rode the pine, uh, played freshman and JV ball. And then all of a sudden, my junior year, man, it kind of clicked uh, the aggressiveness, uh, the the will, all that stuff came out. And, and it was a way for me to be different i mean i was a short i say short i mean i was six when i was 13 just to add a, add a little context i was six foot 275 at 13 years old well by the time i got to be a junior in high school i was i was six one i was 290 pounds and, and i kind of filled out a little bit but i could run man like i could run and the athleticism and the perseverance started to come out and and and, and the more it came out the better i got and for a short little fat kid with a little afro and buck teeth uh, to be good at something kind of built my self-esteem, man. And I'm like, okay, I'm good at this. And so you want to continue to do things you're good at. And so I started playing, man, and the scholarship offer started to come. But um, it all started with a will to stay out past when the streetlight came on. But Winsboro's a small town, man. Like Winsboro's 3,500 people. A uh, Friday night in Winsboro when I grew up was we didn't have a movie theater. We didn't have like a – huge restaurant kids would literally borrow their parents cars and go to the local walmart park in the parking lot turn the music on just kind of hang out and of course come some of them would have a couple beers the local police didn't bother us bother us until like after midnight but like at nine or ten o'clock we would go up there and just hang out in the parking lot for a couple three hours playing music and just relax because there was nothing else to do and so it was a really really small town um i see let me see one two 
there are seven streetlights in the whole town. <laughs> and um, so there's, it, it's, it's a small, quaint community. It's changed over the years, though. So to say it was a culture shock, when I went to visit campuses, and even when I got to LSU and was there every day, uh, it would be an understatement. Yeah, when that first Walmart comes in, man, I mean, the whole town shuts down for that. Man, you've never seen anything like when the Walmart comes in. And then when they go from Walmart to Super Walmart, where now we have groceries, oh, I mean, you would have you thought they built the biggest, like the mall of uh, Minneapolis. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a game changer. I love that, man. Your, your desire just to stay out past your curfew got you on the football field. Yeah. Uh, tell me about your rival and your mascot and team colors. What was kind of the, the universe of Winsboro? Uh, Winsboro Wildcats, uh, black and gold. Um, of course, this was back in the days of Russell Athletic. There was no Nike, and it was Russell Athletic with the jersey with the big holes in them. Yep. Um, our big rivals were like we in Winsboro. They don't have count in Louisiana. They don't have counties. They have parishes, right. and so we were in Franklin Parish. And so the rivals were, were the ones in the parish. You had Wisner, uh, Gilbert, Crowville, uh, Ravel was a little rival. Uh, we, we were a little south of Monroe. I'm sure you've heard of West Monroe, Louisiana, where, uh, big powerhouse football, Washita, Jamie Spencer, Cam Robinson, like a bunch of players have come out of Monroe, but we're kind of a small town. So, uh, it kind of hurt us a little bit because in our parish, there were eight high schools. And so we had a lot of players, but they were spread out. There were three or four or five at each school. Now, years later, it consolidated and became Franklin Parish High School. So all the athletes now have to go to one school. And oh, Winsboro, wow. um, and so the football team is a lot better. The basketball team is a lot better. Whereas when I went to school, we had 35 guys on the football team. I played both ways. I started at left guard, at right defensive tackle. I made all state both ways. I never came off the field, except on kickoff, kickoff return, punt, punt return. That was the only time I came off the field. What number did you wear? 64. Uh, no, there was no, nothing special behind the number. Uh, I, I think when I, when I first got there, it was a number they handed out and I stuck with it. Like it, again, it was just playing football. It wasn't about the number. It wasn't about Instagram. Like none of that stuff was around. It was just a kid playing football with the Jersey that was too big playing with his boys. I happened to be good at it. And like a typical high school, um, athlete like your best friends are the guys that are on your team because you spend so much time with them and you know we had a band and of course we had cheerleaders and some of the football team dated some of the cheerleaders like it, it's no different like it's a small school it was um it's it, it's like friday night lights it's not as big as some of the things you see on tv but it, it's this it's it's the quintessential friday night lights everybody in the town comes um everybody hangs out uh, there's nothing like the smell of, of, of hamburgers and hot dogs. There's nothing like I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to see if you know anything about this, Wes. If you ever had an old school like Frito pie where they take the bag of Fritos, open oh, it up, yeah. put the chili and cheese, and they give you a spoon. And you just eat the Frito pie out of the bag. Like, that's high school football at its core, man. I mean, that's a pregame meal for some teams, you know. <laughs> Break that thing out. There's yeah. really nothing like a cheeseburger, though, off of one of those grills that they haven't cleaned in like four months. Yeah, and it's all charred up, but a lot of flavor in those, buddy. A lot of flavor. Yeah, <laughs> they put it in that foil, though, man. That cheese is melted just a little bit. Get a little ketchup and mustard on there, like that's hey, a better I still, than you're gonna get. E even to this day, my daughter's a cheerleader at Berkeley Prep, which is I'm sure you remember when Tom Brady came to Tampa, he was throwing at this high school, and there was a helicopter flying over Brady throwing at the high school. Well, that's the that's Berkeley Prep, so that's the high school my daughter goes to. And there's still nothing better. I get to the game probably mid-first quarter. She's being a cheerleader, so I'm paying attention. But I'm also watching football. I go to the concession stand right, be right before halftime, grab a couple of cheeseburgers, grab a, a pack of peanuts and a bottle of water, and I go sit in the end zone, man. 